Uh, it's always fun to come here, and uh, it's a, pri a privilege to be with you in a different capacity than I uh, used to be. I privilege me abiti ovdje s vama u jednom drugčijem tonu nego prije. Yeah, by God's grace, we planted a church in Cincinnati uh, 21 years ago. Prije 21 godinu po Božoj milosti smo osnivali crkvu u Cincinnatiju. And uh, after 21 years, I ran out of gas, basically. I nakon 21 godinu na neki način sam ostao bez goriva. Uh, the, the church needed a break from me, and I needed a break from the church. Uh, crkva se trebala odmoriti od mene, i ja sam se trebao odmoriti od crkve. We still like each other. Još uvijek se volimo. But uh, the break was was good. Ali taj uh, taj razlaz je nešto dobro. Uh, now I'm working for. Uh, Redeemer city to city as Nana described. Uh, sad radim za ovu organizaciju Redeemer od grada do grada. And it's a small organization out of New York City uh, committed to church planting in the great cities of the world. I to je jedna mala organizacija iz New Yorka koja se bavi osnivanjem crkava po cijelom svijetu. I, I wanted to share with you our, our five core values of city to city before we get into our, our text. I prije što uđemo u naš tekst, htio bih vam podijeliti s vama uh, pet temeljnih uh, vrijednosti hvala uh, organizacije od grad do grad. Yeah, the, uh, so the first core value is church planting in cities. I prvo je prva ta vrijednost je osnivanje crkava u gradovima. Uh, second is the centrality of the gospel. Drugo je središnja uloga evanđelja. Uh, the gospel of grace that, that changes lives, it changes churches and it changes cities. Evanđelja milosti koje mijenja živote, koje mijenja gradove. And you have a great you have a great tradition, a great history in southern Europe of the gospel changing lives, churches and cities. I ovdje u južnom dijelu Europe vi imate već povijest toga kako evanđelje mijenja crkve, živote i gradove. We're also about contextualization. Također bavimo se kontekstualizacijom. The churches that we plant, we want to make sure they're speaking language that people can understand. Drugim riječima želimo da ljude u kojima mi služimo govore jezikom koje ljudi razumiju. And planting churches that connect with the culture around them. I osnivaju crkvu koja se može povezati sa kulturom koja ih okružuje. We believe in the gospel for the whole man. Vjerujemo da je evanđelje je za cijeloga čovjeka. Not just a gospel that saves souls but a gospel that saves the whole man and offers deeds of justice and mercy to those in need. To jest da da evanđelje nije ništa samo što spašava duše, nego ono dodiruje čovjeka tamo njegovoj potrebi, njegove društvene potrebe, njegove socijalne potrebe. Our final value is indigenous leadership. Uh, isto tako naša konačna vrijednost je to da, da želimo vođe koje potječu uh, od tamo gdje služimo. Which yeah, simply means we get behind national leaders, we don't put Americans or Brits uh, in these places. We we want to raise up and support uh, national church planners. Uh, drugim riječima želimo podupirati, pomagati nacionalne uh, osnivače crkava, a ne stavljati samo Amerikance i Britance da vode te crkve. So what we hope to do by God's grace is to, to facilitate movements of the gospel in the great cities of the world. Tako da želimo na neki način pomoći da evanđelje uh, uh, trči u velikim gradovima we svijeta. Ass we assisted in the planting of 50, 51 churches Pom in Europe last year. Pomogli smo u osnivanju 51 crkve u Europi prošle godine. And 450 since the year 2000. A od 2000. godine uh, 450 crkava. Now most of those church plants have been in northern Europe. I većina tih crkava su u sjevernoj Europi. Southern Europe needs the gospel. Međutim i Južna Europa isto tako treba evanđelje. Uh, the needs are great as you know. I kao što znate velike su potrebe ovdje. Uh, there's a lots of fear, worry, depression. Puno je depresije, straha cynicism cynicizma and very little hope for the future in, in most of our cities i treba nam jedna nada za budućnost u našim gradovima the churches in southern europe are mostly small većina crkava u južnoj europi su male church planting and church growth as many of you know most of you know is very difficult i teško je kao što znate većina vas zna teško je osnivati crkve i sporo je osnivati crkve u ovim predjelima the ground is hard tlo je jako tvrdo and the work is slow. I rad ide jako polako. How can the church break through this? Kako može crkva na neki način imati uh, prodor u društvu? How can the church make a greater impact in the cities of Southern Europe? Kako možemo imati uh, veći utjecaj 
na gradove južne Europe. We believe it's through gospel-centered churches and gospel-centered believers. Vjerujemo da to možemo postići tako što se osnivamo crkve koje su utemeljene na evanđelju i što podižemo ljude koji su utemeljeni na evanđelju. And the apostle Paul describes how that works in our passage today in Colossians chapter 1. I danas apostol Pavao to objašnjava u našem odlomku u Kološanima prvom poglavlju. What does a gospel-centered church look like? Kako izgleda uopće jedna crkva koja je utemeljena na evanđelju? Like? Kako izgleda vjernik koji je utemeljen na evanđelju? Let's read Colossians 1 verses 1 through 14. I možemo pročitati Kološanima prvo poglavlje od 1 do 13. Do 14. Yeah. Apostol Krista Isusa voljom Božjom i brat Timotej, kološanima, svetoj vjernoj braći u Kristu, milost vam i mir od Boga, Oca našega. Zahvaljujemo Bogu, Ocu gospodina našega Isusa Krista, uvijek kad molimo za vas, jer smo čuli za vašu vjeru u Kristu Isusu i za ljubav koju imate prema svima svetima, radi dobra kojem se nadate i koje, vas, koje se za vas čuva na nebesima. Zan ste prije čuli, propovjedanjem istine, to jest radosne vijesti koja je kod vas i kako je u svem svijetu rodna i napredna, tako je i među vama. Od onoga dana koji čuste i upoznaste milost Božju u istini. U to vas je poučio Epafra, ljubljeni naš drug u službi. On nas vjerno zastupa kao službeni Kristov. On nas je i obavijestio o vašoj ljubavi u duhu. Zato i mi, od onoga dana u koji smo čuli, ne prestajemo moliti za vas i prositi da vas Bog napuni potpunom spoznajom svoje volje, sa svakovrsnom mudrosti i duhovnim razumijevanjem. Tako da živite dostojno gospodina, da mu budete ugodni u svemu, da budete plodonosni svakom vrstom dobrih dijela i da napredujete u spoznaji Boga. Da se ojačani svakovrsnom snagom kako to odgovara moći njegova božanstva, osposobite za savršenu postojanost i strpljivost. Da veselo zahvaljujete Ocu koji nas učini dostojnima sudioništva u baštini svetih u svijetlu. On nas je istrgnu, istrgnuo iz vlasti tame i prenio u kraljestvo svoga ljubljenog sina u kome imamo otkupljenje, oproštenje grijeha. Amen. So the first thing we see here is a uh, a picture of a gospel-centered church. It's it's the, the the gospel's good effects where it's where it's preached. Uh, prvo što vidimo je je, je uh, kako izgleda crkva utemeljena na evanđelju i koji su to dobri učinci crkve koja je utemeljena na evanđelju. So I see five character, characteristics here of a gospel-centered church. I ovdje vidimo pet karakteristika te crkve koja se temelji na evanđelju. The first three are well known to you, faith, hope and love. I prve tri su vam jako dobro poznate, vjera, ljubav i nada. These are the marks of a healthy gospel-centered church. To su to su obilježje, to su vrijednosti uh, crkve koja se temelji na evanđelju. It's a community of faith. To je jedna zajednica ljudi koji vjeruju where leaders the pastors and and the leaders and the members of the church are believing God for great things. Gdje oni koji vode crkvu, oni koji su u crkvi, gdje oni koji služe u crkvi vjeruju Bogu da će učiniti velike stvari. It's a community of hope. To je zajednica gdje postoji nada. They have a positive view of the future and what God will do in the life of the church and the life of the community. Oni imaju jedno pozitivno gledanje na budućnost i na to što će Bog učiniti u njihovoj crkvi i u njihovoj budućnosti. It's a hopeful group of people. To je jedna uh, zajednica puna ljudi punih nade. They, they, the people in Colossae had heard the gospel of, of hope, uh, the hope laid up for them in heaven. It had, it, God's, by God's grace it had brought them faith and then they began to express love to one another. Je, That's how the gospel works. To je zajednica koja je čula. I will, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, to je zajednica koja je čula evanđelje koja je onda uh, živjela evanđelje i željela evanđeljem dosegnuti druge 
So it's a community of faith, a community of hope, a community of love. Znači to je zajednica puna vjere, zajednica puna nade i zajednica puna ljubavi. In a world of darkness where there's there's no faith, there's no hope and there's no love. U svijetu tame gdje nema ljubavi, gdje nema nade i gdje nema vjere. These three characteristics we tend to take for granted. I ponekad ove karakteristike uzimamo zdravo za gotovo. But they are very important. They're very powerful, very su, attractive, attractive before a watching world. One su jako snažne, one su jako važne, isto tako su privlačne za svijet koji treba pomoć. So in addition to the trio of faith, hope and love, the gospel is bearing fruit outside the church. I isto tako uz taj trio ljubavi, nade i vjere, evanđelje je to koje donosi plod izvan crkve. Paul says the gospel is bearing fruit throughout the world. Pao kaže da evanđelje donosi plod kroz cijeli svijet. That was true then, it's true now. To je bila istina tada, to je istina isto tako i sada. And he would, he would assume that the gospel is going out from this church as well. I mi isto tako uh, možemo pretpostaviti da evanđelje ide i iz naših crkava vani. And then he says it's, it's also bearing fruit in us in the believer. Kaže, kaže da ono isto tako donosi plod u nama koji smo vjernici. He says not only is the gospel bearing fruit outside the church but it's also bearing fruit among you in ne you. Sa, ne samo da evanđelje donosi plod izvan crkve, ono donosi crk, uh, plod u vama koji ste vjernici. So how does the gospel uh, grow and uh, grow in us? Na koji način to evanđelje raste u nama? You know the gospel is not just to get us saved. Evanđelje nije nešto samo što nas spašava. The gospel should grow in us and and get us sanctified and conformed more to the image of Christ. Evanđelje je to koje nas treba isto tako posvećivati i suobličavati sa slikom Isusa Krista. So we see this in verses 9 through 14. It's a, it's a prayer. We'll talk about the prayer in a moment, but it's a prayer and a picture of gospel growth in a believer. I to vidimo u stihovima od 9 do 14 koje je molitva i više ćemo malo govoriti o toj molitvi. Međutim to je slika na koji način uh, evanđelje donosi taj plod u vjerniku. So when Paul talks about the gospel growing, bearing fruit among them, this is what he's talking about. I kada Pavo govori o tome kako evanđelje uh, raste i donosi plod među njima, upravo je to ono što on, o čemu on govori. He, he prays that their lives would look like the characteristics he gives in verses 9 through 14. On se moli da bi da bi njihovi životi odražavali te karakteristike on koje on opisuje u ovim stihovima. So let me give you eight characteristics of the gospel-centered believer. I želim vam zato dati osam karakteristika jednog vjernika čiji se že, život temelji na evanđelju. First he is filled with the knowledge of the will of God. Kao prvo on je ispunjen uh, spoznajom Božje volje. In spiritual wisdom and understanding. On ima uh, duhovnu duhovno razumijevanje i mudrost. So the first thing the gospel center believer knows is the will of God. I prva stvar što je jedan vjernik koji se temelji na evanđelju, čiji se život temelji na evanđelju zna, to je Božja volja. You can't do the will of God unless you know it. Ne možete raditi Božju volju, činiti je, vršiti je ako je ne znate. And how do we know the will of God? A kako možemo znati Božju volju? Well, it's, it's in God's word. Ona se nalazi u Božoj riječi. So we need to know God's word. We need to be in God's word all the time. Može, moramo znati Božju riječ, Mo, moramo stalno prebivati u Božoj riječi. So as we know what his will is, we will get spiritual understanding if the spirit is working in us as we as we read and study his word. I kad dok čitamo Božju riječ, vjerujemo da Duh Sveti će djelovati kroz tu riječ i da će nam on donositi tu duhovno razumijevanje i duhovnu mudrost. So it's the word of God and the spirit of God working in the word to uh, direct us in the will of God. Tako da uh, Božja riječ i Boži duh djeluju u našim srcima kako bismo mi mogli onda donijeti drugima Božju riječ. So as we know the will of God, we'll walk worthy of the Lord. That's the second characteristic, walking worthy of the Lord. I druga karakteristika je to ako poznajemo Božju riječ onda ćemo živjeti uh, dostojno Gospodina. We walk in a way that's worthy of his name that glorifies him. Uh, ćemo na način koji proslavlja njegovo ime koji je dostojan onoga ko on jest. The third characteristic is that we are pleasing to him. Treća karakteristika je to da smo mi njemu ugodni. And this gets to our motivations. I to time dolazimo do našeg motiva. What motivates you on a daily basis? Odnosno do toga što nas motivira svakodnevno. You have two choices. You can live to please yourself or you can live to please God. Imate dva izbora. Možete živjeti da biste ugodili sebi ili možete živjeti da biste ugodili Bogu. So the gospel-centered believer lives to please God. 
i onaj čovjek vjernik koji se temlji na evanđelju on želi ugoditi gospodu i zar ne to je jedna svakodnevna bitka u kojoj se mi borimo da želimo ugoditi gospodinu a ne sebi i mi živimo s tom motivacijom da mu želimo ugoditi zašto? zato što znamo što je on učinio za nas i budući da znamo što je on učinio za nas u evanđelju mi želimo živjeti da mi budemo ugodni The fourth characteristic is, is uh, the, the gospel-centered believers bearing fruit in, in good works, all kinds of good works. Četvrta karakteristika je ta da oni koji čiji se život temelji na evanđelju žele činiti dobra djela. So this, this gets to our having an impact on the people around us. God is using us in the lives of the people around us. I, i tu, je, tu dolazimo do tog utjecaja na društvo. Bog koristi nas da bismo mi služili uh, društvu oko nas. The sixth characteristic is that we're then increasing in the knowledge of God. Šesta karakteristika je da kako mi to, sve to činimo, mi sami se na neki način rastemo u toj spoznaji Boga. This is a little bit different than the knowledge of his will. To je to se malo razlikuje od onoga što smo rekli prvo, znači spoznaje njegove volje. The, the word knowledge here deals with an intimacy, it deals with a deep personal knowledge of God. I, i u, ovoj, u ovom slučaju riječ spoznaja tiče se jedne intimnosti i uh, intimne spoznaje Boga. Many people have looked at these these first uh, six characteristics as uh, what they call the Colossian cycle. I mnogi gledaju na ovih šest karakteristika i kažu da je to kološanski ciklus. Where you know the will of God through his word. Gdje, gdje znaš Božju volju kroz njegovu riječ. You walk in a manner worthy of him. I onda hodaš na način koji je njega dostojan. Your motives are to please him. Uh, vaši motivi su ti da ga želi, you bear, želite mu ugoditi. You bear fruit in, in, in good works uh, in, in the people around you. Donosite uh, plod dobrim dijelima ljudima oko vas. And it's only then that you deepen your personal knowledge of God. I tek onda možete reći da produbljujete vaš osobno intimno znanje Boga. It's gospel growth in the, in the life of a, of a believer. I to je jedan jedan rast u evanđelju. And the last two, well let, let me be back up and say it's instructive sometimes to look at the opposite of this and what that would look like. Međutim isto tako neka nam može pomoći kad pogledamo na ono što je suprotno od ovoga što smo upravo rekli. What would be the opposite of these characteristics? Uh, što bi bilo suprotno ovim karakteristikama? No knowledge of the will of God. Uh, da neko nema spoznaju Božje volje. So you're not in, you're not in the Bible, you don't know his will. Dakle ne prebivate u Bibliji, ne znate njegovu volju. You walk in a manner unworthy of the Lord. I onda uh, hodate na način, živite na način koji nije dostojan Gospodina. You live to please yourself. Živite da ugodite sebi. You're not having an impact on anybody around you. Nemate utjecaja ni na koga oko sebe. And you're actually decreasing in the knowledge of God. I zapravo se vaše spo, intimna spoznaja Boga tada smanjuje. So you're either one or the other, you're either increasing in your personal knowledge of God or you're decreasing in your personal knowledge of God. Dakle, može se dogoditi samo jedno od ova dvoje, ili se ili rasete u spoznaji Boga ili se smanjuje. There's no standing still. Nema uh, stajanja na mjestu. You're moving deeper into the knowledge of God or you're moving away from the knowledge of God. Ili više upoznajete Gospoda ili ga manje upoznajete. Now these last two are especially intriguing and I think challenging. I mislim da ova zadnja dva su zanimljiva, isto tako su na neki način izazov nama. Number seven is you are strengthened with power with, with his, according to his, his glorious might. Uh, broj sedam je da, da se vi, se, vi ste osnaživani, ojačavani u sili njegove moći. For what? With this kind of language you'd think maybe he's he's looking that we would be strengthened with power to do all kinds of miracles. Uh, za što? Se ojačani. Možda kad čitamo ovako mislimo možda za neka čuda. No, he says uh, we're strengthened with power, we need his power to do what? To be patient. Al ne, nego za to da budemo strpljivi. To persevere, to endure through the grind of daily life. Da da ustrajemo kroz to sivilo običnog života. The gospel-centered believer has the power of God to get through the grind of daily life with patience. I vjernik koji se temelji na evanđelju ima tu silu Božju da može biti strpljiv i ustrajan. The word for patience is the Greek word for remaining under something. Uh, riječ koju Pavo ovdje koristi za strpljivost je riječ koja se koristi za kada je neko pod nekim teretom. So if you are a patient person, you remain under you remain under your circumstances. Ako ste strpljiva osoba, onda ostajete pod svojim okolnostima. 
And you trust that God is going to sustain you through that and get you through it. I vjerujete da će Bog vas podržati u tome i da ćete uspjeti doći na drugu stranu. The opposite of that is, is running away from your trials and trying to wiggle out from under them. A suprotno od toga je da želite pobjeći od svojih nevolja. Did you say wiggle? No. You didn't say wiggle? <laughs> I'm not that fast. Okay, in other words. Right. <laughs> But think of it. God's power is to give us patience. A to je Božja sila koja će vam dati strpljenje. To hang in there in our trials da, da možete uh, ostati u vašim nevoljama knowing that he is doing a work doing a work in our hearts as jer, we go through those jer znate da on djeluje u vašim srcima dok vi prolazite kroz ta iskušenja and then we can give thanks i onda joy. možete zahvaliti Bogu sa radošću so i think the joy goes with the thanks and not with the uh, with the patience ja mislim da radost dolazi uh, radost dolazi sa strpljenjem oh, sorry i think joy, joy goes with the giving thanks and not so much with the patience. Uh, radost dolazi sa zahvaljivanjem, a ne sa strpljenjem. I find it difficult to be joyful in my trials. Uh, meni je teško nekad biti uh, zah- radostan u mojim nevoljama. Uh, that's my own personal problem, I think. I mislim da je to moj osoban problem. But at the same time, there's a gladness knowing that God is at work. Ali isto vrijeme, u isto vrijeme postoji jedna radost što znam da Bog djeluje. I'm not real happy about the trials and tribulations that I experience. I nije baš da se radujem u tim nevoljama i iskušenjima i tako dalje. But there's a gladness that God is at work. Ali postoji radost da Bog djeluje. There's a purpose in it. Da postoji jedna svrha u svemu tome. And I can give thanks. I što mogu zahvaliti za to. So giving thanks uh, is not to be underestimated. Tako da ne smijemo podcijeniti zahvaljivanje. It's another very important mark of the, of the gospel centered believer. I to je još jedna jako bitna uh, vrijednost tog vjernika koji čiji se život temelji na evanđelju. In Romans 1 Paul talks back the characteristics of the pagan, the unbeliever. U Rimljanima prvom poglavlju Pavao govori o, koje, o tome koje su to karakteristike jednog poganina. And he said there was a failure to do what? A failure to give thanks, to acknowledge God and give him thanks. I oni su podbacili u čemu? U zahvaljivanju Boga. So here's the problem. Proud people don't say thank you very much. I evo problema, ponosni ljudi ne, ne zahvaljuju baš puno. Proud people don't say thank you very much. I'll Ponosni say it again. ljudi ne kažu hvala. Proud people don't know the gospel. Ponosni ljudi ne znaju evanđelje. So those are the eight characteristics of the gospel-centered believer from I, Colossians 1. To su, to, su, to su tih osam karakteristika vjernika koji je utemeljen na evanđelju. Now we have to take a look at the gospel. What is this gospel? Paul describes it for us here in, in, in very colorful language. I uh, trebamo vidjeti što je to evanđelje koje Pava opisuje ovdje jako obojanim uh, riječnikom. In, in verse 5 we see it's the word of truth. The gospel is the word of truth. U petom stihu vidimo da je evanđelje riječ istine. It tells us the truth about who we are and who God is. Ono nam govori o tome tko smo mi, tko je Bog. It tells us the truth about who we are before a holy God. Odnosno kaže nam to uh, o tome tko smo mi pred svetim Bogom. And that we are sinners deserving his wrath and judgment. Da smo mi grešnici koji zaslužuju njegov gnjev. So the gospel always begins with the bad news as you know. Tako kao što znate evanđelje uvijek počinje sa žalosnom vijesti. It's the word of truth about who we are. To je riječ istine o tome tko smo mi. But it's also the grace of God in verse 6. Ali isto tako ona je u šestom stihu Božja milost. So we have to be reminded that we don't save ourselves. Da moramo se podsjećati uvijek da mi ne spašavamo sami sebe. We can't save ourselves in the beginning, we can't save ourselves in the middle, we can't save ourselves at the end. Ne možemo spasiti sebe na početku, ne možemo spasiti sebe u sredini, isto tako ne možemo spasiti sebe na kraju. It's the grace of God, it's not of works. E, to je to je Božja milost, a ne djela. The gospel is also an inheritance. Evanđelje isto tako je jedna baština. We inherit all the spiritual riches that God has for us. Mi baštinimo sva ta duhovna dobra koja Bog nam je There's a couple ways to look at this. It's God gives us an inheritance of wealth. Evo neki nekoliko načina na koje možemo gledati na to. And, Bog je nama dao uh, baštinu. And in some passages of scripture God is made wealthy by inheriting us. We're his inheritance. Uh, u drugim odlomcima Bog je taj koji se obogatio i baštinio nas. God thinks quite a lot of us. Yes, his, Bog, his children. Bog gleda na nas i, i voli nas kao svoju djecu jako puno. So both are probably at work here in this this I phrase. I najvratnije u, u ovom izrazu je uh, puno toga na djelu. The gospel is deliverance from darkness. Uh, evanđelje isto tako je izbavljenje iz tame. The darkness of sin and guilt and shame and ignorance. Od, od neznanja i, i uh, krivnje i grijeha. And it's a transfer to the kingdom of the Son of God. 
I ona se prenije u kraljestvo svoga ljubljenog sina. Which is a pretty good transfer. Što je jako dobar, dobar transfer. From the domain of darkness to the kingdom of the Son of God. Iz, iz, ovega, iz ove vlasti tame u kraljestvo Božje. The gospel Božje. Is, is redemption. Evangelje isto tako je otkupljenje. Uh, redemption means uh, Jesus buys us, he purchases us and we belong to him. Evangelje, to jest otkupljenje znači da nas je Isus kupio i da mi sada pripadamo njemu. He paid a price that we would be his children by his, his blood on the cross, his death for us. That's the price he paid to redeem us, to buy us out of the slave market of sin. You got that? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> So on je, on, je, on je bio taj došao na tu tržnicu uh, gdje smo mi bili kao robovi grijeha i ona se kupio svojom krvlju, svojom smrću na križu i sad smo mi njegove djeca. And with that redemption comes the meeting of our greatest need and that's forgiveness of sins. I zajedno sa tim otkupljenjem donosimo uh, dolazimo do naše najveće potrebe, a to je oproštenje grijeha. Forgiveness of sin, shame, guilt. Oproštenje grijeha, uklanjanje srama i krivnje. And complete acceptance. I isto tako potpuna prihvaćenost. For a God, by a God who loves us very much. Od strane Boga koji nas jako puno voli. So this is this is the gospel here in Colossians chapter 1. I to je evanđelje koje Pavao opisuje ovdje u Kološanima prvo. And it is good news, isn't it? I ona je zbilja radosna, dobra vijest. It's Jesus saving us, blessing us. To je Isus koji nas spašava, koji nas blagoslivlja. He is the truth, he delivers us, he transfers us, he redeems us. On je istina, on je taj koji nas prenosi u svoje kraljstvo, on je taj koji nas spašava i otkupljuje. He changes us. On nas mijenja. So that we desire to please him. Tako da mi želimo sada ugoditi njemu. And we love God and we love our neighbor as a result. voljeli Boga i bližnjega svoga. Finally, we want to look at this passage. How does how does this gospel centeredness spread? I želimo vidjeti po, posljednju stvar u ovom odlomku, na koji način se ova usredotočenost na evanđelju širi. How does it bear fruit outside the church? Na koji način ona donosi plod izvan crkve? The, uh, the man Epaphras, however you want to pronounce it, took it to Colossae from, from Ephesus. Epaphras was either a layman or a, or a teaching elder from uh, Ephesus. Epaphra je bio jedan uh, ili učitelj ili možda lajk koji je živio u Efezu i on je donio evanđelje u Kolos. And he brought the gospel to Colossae. Yeah. Just, sorry. You already said that? Okay, good. All right. Um, so, the gospel comes through people uh, evanđelje dolazi kroz ljude and through the word of God. I kroz Božu riječ. So, what brings people to Christ? Što je to što donosi ljude Kristu? Especially in difficult places. Posebno u teškim mjestima, tvrdim mjestima. Exposure to God's word. Uh, uh, kad je neko blizu Bože riječi. And exposure to God's people. I kad je neko blizu Božjega naroda. That's a, a kind of a dynamic one two punch that wins the unbeliever to Christ. To je ta boksačka dinamika koja donosi uh, ljude Kristu. My uh, my boss uh, Tim Keller says uh, forget friendship evangelism. Uh, moj šef Tim Keller kaže zaboravi uh, prijateljstvo, evangelizaciju kroz prijateljstvo. He says just do friendship. Samo budi prijatelj. <laughs> so let's let's uh, let's make friends with the people around us. That's how it begins. Hajdemo početi tako što ćemo biti prijatelji s ljudima oko nas. If Christ is in your heart, ako je Krist u vašem srcu, if the gospel is central in your life, ako je uh, evanđelje ono, ono, ona, ona srž vašeg života, it will come out. Ono će izaći. But see, the problem for most of us is we don't have many unbelieving friends. Međutim, problem u tome sa što većina nas nema baš puno uh, prijatelja koji su nevjernici. Or if we do, they're just acquaintances and we're really not getting to know them and they're not really getting to know us. Ili ako znamo puno ljudi tako, oni nisu zapravo pravi prijatelji nego naši poznanici koje mi baš puno ne poznajemo i oni ne poznaju nas. See, we are the light of the world. Tako da mi smo svjetlo svijetu. Jesus is the light of the world. Isus je svjetlo svijeta. But he says you are the light of the world. Ali isto tako on je rekao i vi ste svjetlo svijeta. And light to be effective, to be useful has to come in contact with darkness. I kako bi svjetlo bilo učinkovito, ono mora doći u doticaj s tamom. So we have to go to the darkness around us. Tako da mi moramo ići u tamu oko nas. And let our light shine before men and women. I dopusti da naše svjetlo svijetli ljudima. That's the language of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. To je Isus you know. rekao u propovedi na gori. And then good things will happen. I kaže onda će se dobre stvari događati. It's it's slow. 
Naravno da je to sporo. Neće postojati ono trenutni neki rezultati. Ali ako Krist je u vašem srcu i ako je, uh, ako je evanđelje temelj vašeg života, ono će izaći vani u odnosima sa vašim prijateljima. Zamislite sada je noć and there's a power outage i da jednostavno nestane struje and all the lights go out i sva se svjetla ugase there's no light anywhere nema nigdje svjetla and imagine this this is even harder to imagine nobody has a cell phone i zamislite sada ovo ovo je još teže zamisliti niko nema mobitel so it's complete darkness tako da je totalno tama and somebody in the middle lights a flashlight i netko upali bateriju what happens što se događa everybody goes to the light everybody svi dolaze k svjetlu everybody gathers to the light And wherever that light goes, that's where the people go, right? Gdje god ide to svjetlo, svi prate to svjetlo. That's us. I to smo mi. Before watching in a dark world. I nalazimo se u jednom svijetu koji je u tami, ali koji gleda. But we have to come in contact with with the darkness around us. Međutim, moramo doći u kontakt sa tamom koja je oko nas. Now, I don't have the gift of evangelism. I moram reći da ja nemam uh, dar evangelizi- evangelizacije. And my wife doesn't either. A isto tako ni moja žena. But we can make friends. Ali mi se možemo s prijateljima. And just just one story. We had some friends when we lived in Atlanta. Imali smo prijatelje koji su kada smo živjeli u Atlanti. Our next door neighbors. Naši susjedi. Because I was a pastor, they thought I, they thought we were strange. I budu se sam bio pastor, mislili su da sam čudan čovjek. Uh, that's one of the downsides of being a pastor. I kad si pastor onda to Your neighbors, misle, your neighbors think you're weird and they want to stay away from you. Uh, susjedi misle da se čudan i žele biti što dalje od tebe. So, we kind of kept a low profile. Tako da smo na neki način ono uh, kako, we had, pritajali smo se hvala. We had uh, children the same age our children played together. Uh, naša djeca su se igrala zajedno zašto su bila iste dobi. And we slowly but surely got to know David and Elizabeth their next door neighbors. I polako smo ali sigurno upoznavali naše susjede David i Elizabeth. After a couple of years uh, Elizabeth said to my wife uh, we thought you guys were going to be weird but you're you're pretty normal. Uh, nakon par godina Eliz- Elizabeth je rekla mojoj ženi mi smo mislili da ste vi jako čudni ali čini se da ste skroz normalni in fact there's something about you guys that's very different zapravo čini mi se da nešto u vezi vas je ra- drugčije nego uh, inače you seem to have peace čini se da imate mir when you shouldn't have peace kada ne biste trebali imati mir u svom životu and so that led to a, a deeper relationship And to make a longer story short, they ended up coming to our church and I had the privilege of baptizing their children. I tako da je to dovelo do jednog dubljeg odnosa i da skratim priču, oni su na kraju došli u našu crkvu i ja sam imao privilegiju da ih krstim. The light needs to shine in the darkness. I svjetlo mora sijati u tami. So here are the challenges that, that this passage brings us. I evo izazovi koje ovaj odlomak nam donosi. If you're a pastor, leader of a church, you need to be praying for and seeking to build a gospel-centered church. Ako ste pastor ili vođa u crkvi, onda trebate se moliti i pokušavati da vaša crkva bude utemeljena na evanđelju. If you're a believer, you need to be seek, you need to be seeking a gospel-centered life. Ako ste vjernik, trebate težiti za jednim životom koji se temelji na evanđelju. And let's make sure we know the gospel. I moramo biti sigurni da znamo uopće evanđelje. Let's make sure we understand that it's not of works. Da, da to nije po dijelima. It's not a matter of earning God's favor. Da spasenje nije i kršćanski život da se ne radi o tome da mi pokušavamo na neki način zaraditi Bože uh, Božu ljubav. It's not faith in Jesus plus good works. E, to nije vjera u Isusa plus dobra djela. It's faith in Jesus alone that saves us. Nego nas spašava vjera samo u Isusa. It's also not faith and i can live any way i want to live ali isto tako tu se ne radi o tome da je to ono jer, vjera i sad mogu živjeti kako god hoću jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him daily jesus je rekao uzmite križ i svakodnevno me slijedite that's not just a call that's not a call to discipleship that's a call to salvation uh, to nije poziv na učeništvo to je poziv na spasenje so it makes let's sure we understand it's faith plus repentance and following jesus tako da je tu zapravo riječ o vjeri koja vraća pokajanje i nasljedovanje Isusa. And let the gospel be the center of your life as Christ is the center of your life. Evanđelje mora biti središte tvoga života. And so the Christ središte tvoga života. The final challenge is to to pray. I posljednji izazov je molite se. This is a passage all about prayer. It begins in prayer. Paul says I've give thanks for you for all the things that God has done. Ovaj odlomak na neki način počiva na molitvi. Pavao počinje sa molitvom 
so Paul is praying for this church, and he prays specifically for them in verses 9 through 14. All, the, all these characteristics would be theirs. I najprije Pavo zahvalje, onda se moli za ove karakteristike da budu istinite u toj crkvi. So Paul's hope was in God answering the prayer to change the Colossians and make it a Christ-centered, gospel-centered church. Tako da je Pavo imao taj plan molitve da bi Bog promijenio Kološane u jednu crku koja se temelji na Evanđelju. So the challenge is to pray this way for your church and for yourself. Tako da je plan taj da se molite na ovaj način za sebe i za svoju crku. It's what I pray for you when I, when I pray for you and I do pray for you. I to je nešto što se ja molim za vas kada se molim za vas, a molim se za vas. What we long to see, and I think we all would agree, we long to see movements of the gospel in the cities of Europe. I ono što mi čeznamo vidjeti je da, da evanđelje krene i da donosi plod po gradovima Europe. And I really want to see it happen in southern Europe. I ja zbilja želim da vidim da se to događa u Južnoj Europi. And I know you do too. I znam da to i vi želite vidjeti. Amen. Amen.